Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and this ninja-looking fellow almost looks like an executioner <laughs> over to my side here is a one Mr. Brian E. Roach. Brian, I'd ask you how you're feeling um, aside from the game that we're obliged to cover. How you doing, my friend? Uh, all right. You're right. This is getting a little warm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Well, you know. He's got a full uh, baklava on over here, and it's like, or, or balaclava or whatever baklava right. you eat. Uh, a I'm a Steelers ninja. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, let's see, I blew out my knee. Uh, my brother tested positive for COVID, and I saw him like, you know, the day before that happened. So we're, we're all hunkered down. I can't go get my knee checked because I got to get a negative test first, and I can't get a negative test because I can't find a rapid test. And the earliest test I get in this area is next week. So it's very stupid. Um, and, yeah. you know, but other than that, hey, what's there? <laughs> sad about what's there to I'm be I'm sorry I should have just stayed I should have stuck with the game like you, yeah I know I mean gee many Christmas you're you're like bad Santa when it comes to the Christmas movie spectrum you're not one of the Hallmark ones here I apologize for even asking and uh yeah I, I'm not a Hallmark Santa that's for sure no 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 no, no. Uh, Hallmark what mall Santa anyways yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd take that off you were looking like Monty Python where they're like bring out your dead <laughs> and uh it did it did kind of look a little holy grailish I like yeah, it yeah yeah we just need the coconuts that's kind of the way the season's going maybe you could do something like that so <sighs> Anyways, folks, this isn't must-see TV like your upcoming uh, episodes of Book of Boba Fett, whatever came out on Netflix, Cobra Kai Season 4. Uh, most of you probably weren't looking forward to this. We don't know you how long this is going to go. It depends how much we ramble. <laughs> if, you have, if you haven't watched Wheel of Time, watch that. Yeah, oh. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was awesome. Is that picking up now? Because I, I hadn't got on the bandwagon, and I hear mixed things. Kind of like uh, I, I saw Spider-Man, but I didn't see the Matrix movie yet. I'm, I'm looking. I, I watched Matrix all over yesterday. Uh, I thought that was okay. Uh, oh, you're the uh, first we'll, person that's middle ground on that. Everybody's like hot, cold. There's like no lukewarm on the on any I, you know, scene. I, I go into some of these things with limited expectations. You know what I yeah. mean? That way, if, <laughs> the Steelers well, game yesterday. Yeah, yeah. There you go. It's a perfect lead in into yes. what, how we approached yesterday's game. Look, I'm going to say it up front. We told you in the pregame they were going to get killed. Um, the fact that it was worse than we thought it would be isn't really our fault, but <laughs> it was. It was not. It wasn't unexpected. Was no, it? no. I mean, that's it wasn't it. like that's you went it. in and gone. Oh, wow. I expected so much more. Well, if you did, I don't know what games you've been watching. I, I wish uh, I wish I could say a little more. Here's here's my main problem: three turnovers. That does not yep. help. We 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 said it can't go in there matching aggression. They had to play perfect. They had to play perfect and, and anything but. And you got Boswell missing a field goal. You've got some bodies that are out because of injury or COVID. So you are down Chris Warmly now, who was already a backup on the line. And uh, John Simon logged some time. Uh, Zacadonia is out there saying significant time. I don't know. It was 11 snaps or something. It was like, you know, 16% <laughs> of the game. But considering that, uh, you know, the Chiefs had the ball the entire time, um, maybe I, that makes it even less significant. 11 snaps out of whatever, 10,000 plays that they ran. <laughs> <laughs> I got it here. Hold on. It was uh, 69 plays. Very nice. And the only guy who played nice. every every snap was uh, Terrell Edmonds, who, uh, you know what, I get very few bright spots. I'll actually say this much about the defense. What more were you going to do? I thought in spots they were handed an impossible task field position was against them and I thought they were at least holding the run in some spots as the game wore on obviously TJ's got cracked ribs there's some other things I, I mean I you know me I try and look for something positive out of it but I mean the offense really just stunk so bad that it did the defense zero favors what what the heck else were you gonna do like we said they're going to limit they're going to limit, and believe it or not, Steelers offense runs 72 plays, Brian. That's the way this ends up. They actually end up running more plays. 
Uh, but how many of them were in the fourth quarter? Fifty-seven, uh, probably all of them. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, because the you know, obviously they were pulling their players, and um, you got to see uh, not only Chad Henney but Mason Rudolph in there in the end. And hey, you know what? I don't even think that drive with Mason Rudolph that they were actually trying to even score. But geez, oh man, Zach Gentry, he had to get on the other end of the line, or that would have been an illegal formation penalty. So, you know, didn't have anybody up on the line like a receiver on the other side. So it would have been uh, an eligible tackle. It would have been Dan Moore, I think, in that case. And that blew whatever little bit of time spike or whatever to maybe pad the stats, get some garbage uh, stats. There. But they actually let Mason throw. They didn't come out there and just hand the ball off to, like, Benny Snell three times and, and you know, fold, like, the extra the, – the kitty table that you put out for Christmas dinner. So – um yeah, no, they did that. They did that part during the game. No, that happened. They didn't get off the plane. <laughs> I have a very good friend yeah. of mine is a Chiefs fan, and I, and I told him I said, "Good luck today." And by that, I, I hope I hope you lose. And yeah. it was it was done with an emoji, of course, because uh, we came in like my, my expectation was at least to do something more than what was here. It, it was just like I think it was very demoralizing that once Ben threw that pick. You're trying to do flea flicker stuff. It doesn't. It didn't now, look crisp. It didn't look. Let's just talk about that. What? Look, you know, people have criticized Matt Canada's play calling, and this game was the epitome of allowing you to do that. What kind of baloney nonsense do you do calling flea flickers and reverse, you know, end arounds at the points in the game where they did? First of all, they haven't established any kind of run. You cannot run a flea flicker when you don't have a run game that anyone respects. Additionally, how do you run that reverse, double reverse end around towards later in the game and don't block the guy coming up the middle? Of course it's going to be a nightmare. Uh, uh, the play calling in this game may have been the worst play calling I've seen out of this team the entire year. I'll pull, I'll pull back on that just a little bit. Because Ben forcing some balls where they are, throwing behind guys, the pick, the fumble. It, nobody was good. I, it's not, still it, it's, it's bad still. all the way around. So it's like you know you're going to point out but a lot of people. But a lot of people are like, oh, fire Matt Canada. Do you remember what it was like with Todd Haley in 2012? Everybody said to I, fire him too. I'm so, not even sure. Look, yeah. I, I don't like the play calling, but I'm not even sure Matt Canada has the players he wants to have to run no. the offense oh, that he wants not. to run. No, so, no, and. I mean, the, offensive line. Yeah, the fourth and one. <laughs> yeah, like no, there, that there was, was bad. That was terrible. No and way. And I'll tell you this: there was a guy. There's a guy on Twitter, a Joe Mo guy, who follows me on Twitter. Very nice guy. He he did his own play call on that play, um, and pointed out, you know, the fact that okay, you throw this this uh, you know out, or basically, you know, you do this pitch out. There's not a blocker over there. Nobody blocked anyone. <laughs> oh, you know what? Don't get me started on that one. Uh, and you know, I've got my cousin Brad call you out here because he don't listen to the show at all. But um, it, it's not like he doesn't know we exist. He's just like, well, right. you know, blah 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 blah. You know, it, he just blows me off because he hears me all the other time, and I have to put up with him. But it's one of the few times where I get instead of having angry runs on Good Morning Football, I should just do his angry tweets during the game. I should put him up here on the screen or go. something because he's definitely one of the guys that's a uh, yinzer uh, during the whole thing. And he goes, it's funny because there was like the one game a few weeks ago. It was, he's out now for the season. He does He's not going to a game. And he listens to Mike Tomlin's press conference and he's ready to do the Kool-Aid man impression running through a wall because the coaches talked him into a frenzy. And that was the Ravens game, by the way. And then he was like, Oh, I was so glad I, I, I went. He, so he's like one of these guys and he bleeds black and gold. He really does. But Gets a little too. It's almost like it's a drug to you know an addiction <laughs> to a certain point with him. But he says you pitch the ball back eight yards. Have to have the guy <laughs> Dodgy Harris run eight yards to get to the line of scrimmage. I'm totally on board with that. Tony Romo, shut up about Melvin Ingram. He didn't even make the tackle. I don't think. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up. Actually, I don't even know if he was credited with the tackle oh, for I, that. I, I, I don't care about Melvin Ingram. Neither I do I. About, but everybody's I care been about talking the execution about him. and play call. Everybody like, had been talking about him. Blow who blows up that play? The entire Steelers offensive line who didn't allow it, didn't block a single human being and allowed them. I mean, it was Najee and eight Chiefs. <laughs> I mean, come on. It was yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, from the from the jump, it was ill advised, and I and so you, you stole my thunder there because everyone's now going to just think I'm uh, 
being the Canada apologist, that one is the one I took umbrage with over anything in that game. Um, you know what? I just saw Isaiah Laudermilk's name here. I got to give him a little bit of credit here. I thought he played like a dog for some of this, for being thrown in there and being a rookie and missing time. He, he, he did, but he also got his his behind handed to him on several runs yeah. up the middle and was blo- – I mean, it, it was – doing like one of these things you know it's up and down <laughs> uh i mean i'm i'm much more encouraged about louder milk he has to get stronger in the same way that kendrick green has to get uh about uh grown-ass man stronger than he is um and and be able to hold that point better but he's he's provided way better uh support than i anticipated when they picked it. So uh, I'll give him props for that. Yeah, that's what, that's kind of where I mean. And and there were areas of the game where, you know, they weren't necessarily getting diced by the run game. The chiefs offense, you want to talk about, this is a game where you don't make, you don't need to, you don't want to make any mistakes. Well, or you can't make any mistakes. The chiefs yeah. made no mistake. Everything was flawless on their end. This was a game where they were just fine tuned and, and there was, they could do no wrong anywhere. Yeah. Um, Najee eventually gets some of his later in the game, unfortunately. Uh, well, I won't say. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, 19 and 93. Benny Snell had five for 20. Uh, some of that looked a little better. But by this time, the pedal's off the gas for the Chiefs. They had already uh, throttled the Steelers, so 30 to nothing. Uh, lead by the third quarter. You were asking how many points had been scored for a record in the first half. That almost happened later last night with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Uh, it could always be worse, so yeah. it, at least bring that up. But yeah, you can't you can't have these situations with the possession of the ball. The Steelers get the ball first, five plays, eight yards. Yeah, that's just what are you doing? Two and a half minutes. They had to possess the second series, Brian. One play. It's one play and an interception. Eight seconds. Let's yep. bring these guys right back out after Kansas City drove 14 plays, 68 yards for a touchdown. Let's give them the ball on the Steelers' 49. You're asking too much. You got T.J. Watt, who's but you're late in the season as it is. You got T.J. Watt playing with cracked ribs. Uh, another thing that they had going on in this game, I'm not sure if you uh, if your spidey senses were tingling on this one like they were with mine, but. Uh, Tyreek Hill was pretty much a non-factor 2-19, and and that's because they let Joe Hayden roam, which they don't do often, but Joe right. Hayden followed him everywhere <clears throat> in that game. And I think that kind of threw off some a, a few other things as well. Of course, when you got Mahomes and he's got time and he's the quarterback that he is, what, do you, what the heck else are you going to do there? It's, you know... Yep. I, I, I said it, I the mean, TV... I said to TV was, like you, I, it's what I. It's not. It's not anything that I didn't expect the Chiefs to just do what they've been doing. It's the throw the interception, Deontay not catching a ball, fumble. That's the stuff where I'm just like sitting here with my 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 face in my hands. Yeah, I, you know, as I said, it's not. It is worse than I thought it would be, primarily on the on the on the offensive side for sure, uh, but was worse. Look. TJ would crack ribs. I don't know if he should have even tried it. He was he was ineffectual, and you could see him grimace in pain a variety of times. He couldn't he couldn't get the push and the drive that he normally gets. He did on a couple plays, but overall, I don't know. But at that at that point, what are you going to do? Have John Simon play all of the snaps? Uh, you know what I mean? I, what are you going to do? Um, you know, Tuska is going to come in. Uh, I mean, Alex had a nice game. Highsmith had the sack. I thought so. Uh, but yeah. they just couldn't get consistent pressure. And this is – this is it's been this case, this this way all season long. I mean, you're talking about from the get-go, you, you're you down to it and Lua Lou, basically from game one, right? And now you've got backups all season long. They've And they've yet – they've managed to handle things. But once you start to lose – a, any additional piece, right? Any, and even though Chris Wormley is, you know, is a backup, he's played well. He's out of. The, he's pro- providing pressure. He's been getting sacks. You just, you just start to lose that push. The middle was soft. They weren't great in, 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 you know, keeping their lanes in their rush. Uh, you know, Cam had the one sack, which was nice, but again, I, it just was tough. I, I agree with you about Joe Hayden. I think. People are going to give 
are going to not see that because when you're watching on TV, it's really hard to tell. Uh, but the fact that Tyreek Hill was really a non-factor uh, says says something there. Uh, you know, unfortunately, everybody else was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're lucky Kelsey wasn't playing. Uh, oh, also yeah, because... he'd, 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 it'd have been worse. I mean, how much worse really could it have been? It's not like they didn't do whatever the hell they wanted to. For the most part, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's... And, and the run defense really wasn't as bad as it could have been considering right i mean you know they didn't allow a, a individual 100 yard rusher they yeah. allowed 127 yards overall but that's under their average <laughs> uh, yeah i mean damian williams had like five for an average but you had gore with three six you had a couple of big plays where he squeaks out for the one pass play you yeah. get some things that are busted you, and this is kind of my point is is not only new bodies but doing things different you have hayden roaming and hayden's only been back he didn't even play a full game last week right you, you have him doing that and you're trying to get some type of consistency or whatever you're missing bush you have spillane spillane plays almost the entire game here i think it was like not all yeah. but two of the snaps uh ulysses uh gilbert plays i think for the really I think he may have gotten in once or twice during the season, but it's like a snap here or there, kind of like Miles Killebrew coming in for one play uh, right. yesterday. But he he played a <laughs> handful too. Simon he played he played a little bit he played less than Tuska and Taco Charlton, and I think that's just to see is this a guy that we could put out there as a veteran guy on first down that can maybe run stop, maybe still generate because he you know he's an older veteran guy. Uh, yeah, I forgot they even picked him up. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> he got activated. I'm like, and that's because TJ was hurt. And TJ plays about half the game. I think they're very cognizant of let's let our guys w lick their wounds. This thing's over. Because somebody made I, I, it was the guy that runs the My Sports Update. He does a good job. His name's Ari something. And um, he, he now works, I think, for. Um, Pro Football Focus, or the other way around, Chris Collinsworth, or somebody invested in him, and now he's even got a bigger platform. But he's always done a good job, so I don't want to necessarily throw throw him under the bus for saying this. But when you're observing and you're observing all these games, and there's like three or four going on in the later set, he says the Steelers just kicked a field goal down thirty points instead of like going for it. And I'm like, we know what we know where this is going already. Well, but you know they were you gonna know. go for it until, of course, they get the five yard penalty, and now it's. You know, yeah. 15 yeah. yards for the 15. <laughs> and Tom, and and let's be fair, you know, if you're going to make the 31-point comeback, you got to have a field goal in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And they missed one, and the, and the wind was crazy. We said that Elliot Fry was probably going to zoink one or two of them, and he did, and it could have come down to special teams. That's unfortunate. It, the Steelers did have this. I don't know how much you, you want to hang your hat on this in the fourth quarter, but it was 17 plays, 85 yards. They actually did put together a halfway decent drive that half the country missed because they had to flip over to the Raiders and Broncos with two minutes left that nobody gave two well, you-know-whats about. I'm going to say the same thing I said on Twitter about that. The game was so bad, they would rather watch Derek Carr kneel. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That, damn you. <laughs> it really is. And it's like, you know, the Steelers, they get the ball. You get uh, they get the ball in the beginning of the fourth quarter, and you see Ben gets sacked, and the ball just squeak out. And it's just like, my goodness, like, how much worse can this just continue to get? And I know some people really – they really like kind of like let go of their. You know, this was Jerron Reed who ended up picking that up. I almost thought it was Chris Jones, but it wasn't, and um, or Derek Noddy. But it's just like everybody just wants to complain, fire this guy, fire that guy. It really is down to like the talent that they don't have. If you compare last year's roster, even to this year's, you're down to tight end three with Zach Gentry. That already doesn't help. You have Firemuth out, Ebron out for the season. You're down to your fifth offensive guard. That doesn't help any matters when the rest of the line is already not doing well. And then you're just not on the – you know, Juju not out there. You're starting to – you start putting in some of these puzzle pieces, a Lulu and to it. Th this is important still, even though – how much better would it make? Like, let's say in the case of the offensive line or the offense is very maybe negligible. It doesn't help, though, in the case of going week to week and having to try and get the next guy up and then somebody else goes down next to him and then all of a sudden it's like you're playing with 
primarily like Henry Mondow, practice squad guys. Montrevious Adams logged a lot of time in this game as well. And yeah. I mean, it's uh, you're on unf- what, what's happening is, and this is like I said, I, I don't know that there's a future. How old is Simon? He's pretty old. He's he's up there. It wouldn't surprise me if I if he was 34. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna pull it up. He's been around for a minute. Oh, of course. Why would we? Why wouldn't we show? Here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. thirty. He's actually 31. He's not quite 32 yet. So he might still have a little bit left in him. By the way, Youngstown, Ohio guy like me. So I don't know if you knew that fact. So I've been hearing about him for a long time. Uh, but anyways, and he's had success in the NFL. But you're trying to – you're not only trying to preserve TJ – Maybe preserve Highsmith some. You're trying to get some guys out there like Gilbert. Let's see if there's anything because you're starting to look ahead to next year already with roster building in some of these cases. Some of these guys are getting some experience. So when you complain about depth next year, they won't all be new players. Um, I hate talking about the next year thing because they're still this year, Brian. And I know it's hard to well, say. Well, it's as unbelievable <laughs> as this may seem to some. They're not out of it yet. Now, mm-hmm. I know I know when I say that, people are going to make comments, oh, yes, they are. They, that was, But remember, that was an atrocious game. There's no question about it. And it's fair and, because they've had a few atrocious games yes. like this. But, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that this team, ha- that you should have any expectation that they're going to suddenly gel and go to the Super Bowl. That's not what I'm saying. They still have a legitimate shot at winning the division. If they win the last two games, I mean, I know we have we talked about this a little bit in the last pod, but if they win against Cleveland and they win against Baltimore, that makes them nine and what, seven? Nine, seven, and one. If they're nine, seven, and one, um, already, you know, those two wins basically give you the edge over Baltimore and Cleveland. They would need Cleveland to beat Cincinnati and the Chiefs to beat, Vincent, beat Cincinnati. But if that, if both of those things were to happen, They'd win the division. The problem um, is, I don't know if there's a path to the wild card. And we were so talking I about I don't this believe there is. I don't believe there's a path. The only way, and I said this last episode, I think their best path was winning the division. Mm-hmm. I don't think they have a wild card path anymore. They had to win out, I think, to have a wild card path, and they don't now. Um, I mean, technically they do. I just think that it requires so much help from 17,000 other teams that it's unlikely. But the, the I mean, the Browns beat the the Bengals in Cincinnati, yeah. and this well, time here. it's in Cleveland. Well, here let me let me toss this in here. We've known this for a long time that if there had been seven playoff spots the entire time that Mike Tomlin's been a coach, he only misses once, sharing right. a tiebreaker uh, or sharing the same record but losing a tiebreaker with the Tennessee Titans, who are always in that same position. Titans, Forty uh, Niners. Another team that's always ravaged with injuries and such. Thanks for blowing that game because that that could have helped with the Colts jumping in there and maybe the Titans fall off a little bit. And what about the Texans, man? What the heck is going on there? They're beating teams they have no business winning against. They're just next in the list here as I'm looking at the AFC South. And, of course, the Jaguars, they're everyone's uh, uh, healing ointment here even for the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> that want to get the win a game. It's like they why can't the Steelers have them on the schedule? That would help cure all. But the Steelers still aren't in the basement of this division, at, at even at seven seven and one. And as, as unlikely as it sounds, and Jerry Dulac, he, I think he was um, the the his article and then his tweet that went out. I think he was channeling uh, Herm Edwards, or no, it was a Jim Mora. Jim Mora. They both did the Coors Light. They had the commercials where they take pieces or they had the press conferences like playoffs, playoffs. Right. They don't even know this team can win another game. Absolutely valid point. And especially you got to go to Baltimore and win in Baltimore. They make it Lamar healthy by then. But that team, not they have, I know I've been complaining about injuries. That team just cannot catch a break. They're just wiped out all over the board. I mean, when you're going Absolutely. down the third or fourth quarterback on the schedule or on the roster and, you know, all their DBs. I mean, geez, a- Averett went down now, and they, they just cannot keep anybody healthy for the life. And, and they've won a lot of close games where the Steelers have lost those close games. So if you flip the Steelers with the Vikings and the Chargers, then they are exactly in the same position. They're, they're the Ravens. And then, yeah. of course, they would have a better record, and they'd, pr- they'd be winning the division right now. 
uh, as crazy as it sounds, with Cincinnati playing good ball, too. Yep. But uh, really good. Joe Burrow, 525 yards or whatever he threw for. And how about Herbs? Hardball after that game. So Cincinnati. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, he was he was upset. So what was that final score, Brian? I got it here. Da, 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 41 to something. 21. 41, 21. 21. Yeah, a little bit of garbage, I think, maybe at the end. But they were still throwing the ball. I guess he attempted like 12 passes on one of these fourth quarter drives. Joe Burrow did. And Harbaugh said something about it in a press conference. And he is getting smoked and ratioed all over social media for it because oh, yeah, this is the he team. tried to keep that 100-yard streak Yeah, alive. exactly, exactly. And I'm here for it. So when you're talking about AFC North football, I'm also here for the Browns and Baker Mayfield blowing that game against the Raiders. Thank you very much, uh, everyone's preseason Super Bowl champ. Uh, I think I'll still be happy if the Steelers finish ahead of the Browns here, especially if they could beat them on Monday night. We're going to be covering that. Hopefully later in the week, not when the ball drops. Hopefully the ball doesn't drop on the Steelers there. Uh, hopefully a home game. What could be? And everybody just assumes that this is Ben's last year, too. I don't know that's necessarily true. Could be. I, I there, think there this is just my – I don't – not like Ben's calling me up and going, hey, this I'm letting you know. Uh, but I at, based on what you see, I would be absolutely flabbergasted if Ben comes back. I guess it all depends. I mean, they're going to have some closed door talks. These are what we, this is what we plan on doing. And just off the top, I don't want to go just there yet. Let's stay with the the standings thing. So you got to look at uh, you're looking across the New England Patriots. Just by virtue of tiebreaker, now aren't in division in the division lead with the Bills. The Bills right. haven't been playing so hot either. Who thought they would even lose six games this year? I mean, a lot of people didn't. And they're not oh, even valid point. Yeah. Yeah. They're not double digits yet. Nine, nine and six. And they have the same record as the Patriots. And then the Dolphins are at seven and seven. So it's um, Dolphins uh, playing after we record this, of course. They got the Saints. So we'll see how that ends up going. And they end up getting into this mix now because they have been on a tear as of late. And uh, let's see what else. So you still got Baltimore, who's the Steelers. They, they control their destiny. They could put Cleveland further down the list here and they could get ahead of Baltimore, but you're looking at everyone. There's three spots for four divisions for wild cards. There's not going to be, it could even be two to go to the AFC East. If the dolphins get in this thing, depending on what the Patriots and bills do that the tie, that's the, this stupid tie that the Steelers have. If they didn't have this tie, they would have a, a tiebreaker over Buffalo. So if Buffalo yeah. fell out of favor and I, and I understand it. It's like Buffalo at times looks better. I mean, the Steelers have not put anything on paper that I think has looked like they have a serious shot. And some people say, why even make the playoffs, blah, blah, blah. It's, making the playoffs is still a thing. I mean, there's a lot of fan bases and a lot of teams that would be happy with a playoff appearance. They don't get there. Like It took like the Raiders like 20 years to get back into a playoff game or something. You know, or the Bills. Remind I mean, me of the last time the, the Bengals won a playoff game? Never. Well, they have, but I mean, it's like, it's been... Uh, was Boomer Esaias in the quarterback at the time? <laughs> yes, yeah, and not only that, I don't think text messaging existed yet, or maybe yeah. even the internet. <laughs> maybe like I'm the, just saying, and, and God forbid they go one and done. <laughs> oh, man, I mean, yeah, that would be... They're rocking and rolling there. They got people interested in the product right now, and as they should be. As I've they said do. Yep. all along that Joe Burrow... That's the guy you got to be looking at. Not Baker, not Lamar. Joe Burrow is the one to be worried about. And then those receivers, we were making fun of Tyler Boyd, and all of a sudden he's come out the last two weeks too. So just our general talking over all this, these teams, you know, the Colts, I think the Colts are going to be locked in here too. You're looking at the the Chargers and the Raiders that are 8-7, and seven, and a lot of these teams are still going to play each other too. They, there's games left that are all interdivisional, not just with the Steelers. It's, it's going to be tight. And there is going to be – they're going to need some help. But help could be on the way. They control their own destiny there. They've proven that they could beat the Browns. The Browns have not looked like a good football team as of late. And the Ra and the Ravens have not either. And the Ravens, some of it is their own shooting themselves in the foot because he get the, Harbaugh gets aggressive and goes for two in those games. Then all of a sudden you lose your quarterback and then other guys are falling and you're already doing this on a shoestring budget. It's just – it's this war of attrition, and now back – I'll go back to the re, the rebuild, the win, the playoff game, the draft pick thing, and everything like that. It's like this is really already a rebuild year, and I didn't really think at first it would be, but of course, like we said, you lose a couple of these players. 
other guys are getting time. So Juju comes out and you got like Ray Ray McLeod out there, for example, and you figure out if he's dependable or not. I'm not saying he is or isn't. I'm just saying this is instead of holding on to him next year and then finding out, you know, now you're getting a yeah. glimpse now at these guys, all of this rookie class, you're getting that now. So next year you build on that. A lot of people, I, I the comments, it's going to take 10 years for this team to get back into anything. 10 years is like three, four roster turnovers. So, you know, uh, it, I, I mean, I'm going to be clear. Here's what it will take for this team to get back into contention. Um, they have to fix the offensive line. They have to fix the louder, defensive line. Louder for those in the back. <laughs> they have to fix the lines, both sides. Now, Which, the, off- the defensive line may fix might itself. Be. Yeah. But you have to fix both sides of the ball right then and there. And added to that, you got to find a quarterback if Ben retires. I know you want to do that. I don't think that's happening next year, unless there's neither do I. Unless it's some, unless it's Aaron one Rogers. of those, uh, uh, well, one of those, yes, one of those veteran moves for a a, a quarterback who has maybe three, four years left in them. Yeah, you know, Russell, Russell Wilson, Pete, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, somebody like that. Oh, Wilson will have more than three, four left in him. You could probably get it, that's the Matt Stafford. Are you sure he's area. taking more damage than Ben has? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? He is mobile. He can move. He is mobile. Daddy. He can I, I, I move. Like it. <laughs> oh, point, he's my though, favorite those, player. Those joint, I know. At some point, those joints get creaky, though, man. My, Especially my, with the abuse. My favorite non-stealer. Yeah, he's thirty-three, but that was Matt Stafford. I was like, hey, I really, you know, you look at where the Rams are. They're still not like, aside from maybe the Packers, they're still not a team that I think is head and shoulders. The Chiefs are playing good ball too, but maybe two teams that you're really looking at right now as maybe favorites because the Cardinals have fell from grace. And, yep. you know, people talk about, well, Marcus Mariota or maybe Jimmy Garoppolo might be available. I don't want any of those guys. I'll, I will ride with Mason Rudolph or Dwayne Haskins or even Ben at 40 years old before I want to make have them make that kind of move. Like you said, let's keep building on the on the offensive line, get some depth for the de- defensive line. Maybe they draft a cornerback or some linebackers and they put other pieces. I don't think anything – Aside from maybe the two lines, and depending on the future of some of those guys, Alu Alu, if you think he can still play, I know he's getting up there. It was a two-year contract, wasn't it? So I think he's still yep. back. And uh, if Tuit is prepared to come back and, and be a guy, and Hayward has been a grown-ass man the whole time, he's still got T.J. Watt. You know, Alex Highsmith's been okay. Uh, I still roll with Devin Bush another year. You're going to have Schobert another year. Schobert is going to be there for a while. And he's the guy calling the plays on the defense. Uh, you're going to give Devin Bush another shot or another year to see, is it mental? Is it injury? Anything like that? The only thing you're really worried about is you're going to you, – do you bring back Terrell Edmonds? I say yes. You're going to have to pay a little bit of money for that. It's not going to be the Minka contract that's looming. Joe Hayden's spot. Maybe you got to kill a Witherspoon there. Cam Sutton's locked in. There's not a whole lot on the defense that is, I, I say you could piece it together with some free agents. you got some money. On the offensive side of the ball, let's see what happens with the receivers. You still have Claypool. You still have Deontay Johnson. You're going to have Friar Muth. Uh, you're going to work on that offensive line, probably draft picks and or veterans. And, and, and to me, that doesn't look too bad, provided everybody stays healthy. So I think that somebody like Mason or Haskins or even an older Ben can still do our – they could be in at least in this position or better, I think. You know what I mean? They could be competitive – they won't be. I don't think they'll be a basement dweller. I know everybody wants Kenny Pickett or they want the shiny new toy. Unless you're in the top ten of the draft, you're, if what are you going to have? You're going to have Ian Book. Go watch him with the Saints. This is like the type of quarterback that you think you're going to get this value pick in the second round or third round or something. And they don't always turn out that way. We, we talk about this too much all the time. I don't want to be a broken record on it. Well, I mean, let me just put this this way. <clears throat> I agree with you. I don't think they're drafting a quarterback this this offseason. Uh, the, if, if Ben retires and, and of the things you said, uh, I'm, I will agree with you. I'd rather roll with a 40 year old Ben than anything else. I, I, my faith level in Mason, as you know, is low. Um, and I don't, as much as I, I want my boy from the Ohio state university to be, uh, you know, to come, to come to fruition, to fulfill his potential, which I think is actually pretty big. Uh, I, I, I don't have. I have I have very limited faith that that will will take place, but but they're not but they're not going to be in a position to draft a quarterback of any value. I'd be much happier if they draft a tackle, a guard, a center, <laughs> somebody 
in that offensive line group. That's yes. where I would like to see them spend their draft capital in this first round. Second round, I don't care anymore. Go ahead and find another receiver that can become the next receiver. I do think they need a third. I don't think Juju is going to want to come back. Uh, but I don't know. You never know. It depends Injuries on how much he loves Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and the injury does hurt his 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 value. People are going to say, are you coming back off an injury? Does he sign another small deal or, you know, low low year deal? Maybe not really small. I mean, you know, how small are any of these deals really? But, you know, a deal that that is a prove it deal again because – he didn't play this year, um, really. You know, we'll see. We we will have to see. If if Juju comes back, I'm content with our receiver. If he doesn't come back, probably not. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and I'm not worried because they're always going to find another guy. I mean, you got two guys there. You got Deontay and you got Claypool. I mean, you've got yeah, you've got Deontay two. was doing his best last year. Deontay impression, impression yesterday. Uh, that was just like the sign of the whole. Like, there was, was there anything good with that game? I mean, I guess Corliss Waitman kicked a sixty yard punt. There was one that went for a touchback. Well, hey, I, I mean, Corliss Corliss Waitman just came in and said, uh, you know, fat guys shouldn't punt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I, mean, I don't mean to. I don't mean to pile on to our guy. Uh, you know, ooh. I was excited about Percy Harvin. Best wishes to him and his family. Uh, you know, I certainly. His, his father understand. passed away. That's yeah, why he wasn't part understand. of that game. Yeah, certainly understand. You know the emotional turmoil that young man must be going through. Um, so I, I, you know, I actually can forgive him completely for the bad game previous and and missing this game, just based on what we learned after the fact. This this happens. I mean, quarterbacks, major league pitchers, soccer goalkeepers, the the mental the hockey. It's just as much mental as it is physical with that. I would Absolutely. Be, I would be surprised if they put him on IR, Presley Harvin, as it is. Just to rewind, um, if you missed it from the previous episode, now you, all you heard was you know me and Noah kind of piling on the bad game he had before. It, he had his dad there. He has family there for that game. And they found out that he had some sort of terminal illness that he didn't have much time, and he passed away Christmas morning. So yep. it's uh, uh, very unfortunate, and, of course, our thoughts go out with him. We talk about this sometimes too much from a fan perspective or a business perspective where it gets to be cold and callous. There's still a very much a, a human uh, effect to this whole operation. And uh, I think the Steelers would just say kick the tires and bring them, as much bring them back next year, especially if it's going to hurt them in two games that they need to play. I thought Waitman was a great last second pickup because he had been in camp with them the previous year. So they had some mm -hmm. familiar, some familiarity with them. I actually thought he had a chance of beating out Jordan Berry the previous year. So we shall see, we shall see how that ends up working out. I was looking at the Juju contract of what he signed for and it was only wasn't my, it was, I thought it was nine. It was actually eight. So he signed for eight million dollars for one year, which you know, for a veteran receiver that I know the the wide receiver one conversation with him that ship may have sailed, especially injuries haven't helped. It makes you forget about some of the things he did early on in the previous year. The offense stunk, Brian. I'm just thinking whatever quarterback is in there, if you shore up the offensive line, they can't do any worse than they did this year. And if the defense is healthy and if they're shuffling or adding a couple pieces, you still have like a few all pro level guys like Hayward and Watt and, and Micah Fitzpatrick. And I think that's enough to carry a team. Like you think about, uh, the Steelers, they just had so many studs. And you had Hall of Fame level players like Troy Polamalu. But you look at even yep. like, and ditto with the Ravens, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed. and you st But you still had like, you know, you're a Hello D. Nada and, and guys like that that were playing in it, Terrell Suggs. So I, I think they've got enough that's there for a basic uh, nucleus. And so it just kind of bothers me when everyone just, uh, you know, they pile on the team and they talk about blowing all these different things up. I said Todd Haley didn't have the strongest 2012 season with that offense either. It was a new system the first time. And this might just be the tra transition of this is one year and Ben, you know, Matt Canada is doing what he can with Ben and he's not as mobile enough and there's other things they would like to do that they can or it just doesn't execute the right way. Najee Harris is still playing his heart out. I still see a lot there. Let's Absolutely. see. Let's see what they can still do. I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's just game planning or it's just like, hey, we're just so down on talent and these are the things we might be able to do. And you got some, let's just say you got the menu in front of you. You know, it looks like the Waffle House menu that Andy Reid carries around. 
once you're not ordering one side of the menu, they're not serving lunch. You can't do lunch. <laughs> so you're down to this limited set of plays, but we still, we still see them eke out the victories with the two teams they got coming up next. Will it be pretty? I don't expect any type of blowout situations. The offense just doesn't put up those type of points or put them in those type of situations, but I could see the defense maybe swinging this thing around in their favor too, creating some splash plays. That's how they beat Tennessee. And then yep. maybe it puts the offense in a situation where you don't have to drive 70 yards. You get where the Chiefs were, middle of the field. And although the Steelers didn't really do that against the Titans either, three plays and out and kicking a field goal after, you know, after these turnovers. So I digress, man. I, I, I really I try to find something here. I'm trying to find something. I'm, I'm squeezing the orange, and it was already squeezed. <laughs> There's not much left in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, look, it's a dishearten- that was a disheartening game. There's no question about it. Um, the last two games are both AFC North games. We know this team, even when they are flat-out bad, plays tough in division games. Um you know, the Browns, the Browns are so up and down that, you know, even though they look at times during a game like, holy crud, that's a day gone good team, uh, somehow they still manage to lose. So uh, we'll see. I mean, if they can beat the Browns, you know, there's there's still a lot more hope than I think we had. We have any right to have, to be quite up frank. Um, I and we'll just kind of see what the Ravens game means. Remember, remember, after the Ravens game. When they won, I said the Ravens could lose every game the rest of the season. And they haven't won a game since then. <laughs> so, uh, you know. You're absolutely, you know, you're absolutely right. And there's still something else that we mentioned even at the beginning of the season or during the season. And a lot of these things have, have hit the mark. And I was even having my conversation. My, my uncle is a diehard Cleveland Browns fan of over 50 years. And he is out. And this he was out on Baker Mayfield before the game they just played on Christmas Day. And then when he saw that, that didn't make that conversation any more comfortable sitting next to me as I'm like cheesing, you know. Well, <laughs> I said, there's you, you my know, quarterback. I, there's my quarterback next year, too, pointing at Aaron Rodgers. So I, I said, <laughs> I said, when Baker Mayfield was drafted, I said, he ain't the guy. You know, yeah. I've never been high on Baker Mayfield. So I don't I don't necessarily feel bad that. Uh, I might be right. <laughs> and I mean, the, the Ravens have lost four in a row, and the games they did win prior to that were was a, a 16-10 game against the Browns and a 16-13 game against the Bears. They get the Rams coming up and then the Steelers, and they get to play two games at home, so I guess it helps having a, uh, a 425 West Coast team come over maybe, Matt Stafford, but I don't know what they got left on defense. And then, of course, the Browns have the Steelers and then the Bengals. So I think both of those teams could be staved off. It's just a matter of I don't know that there's enough – there to get them in the wild card. They're the probably going to be the first the Chiefs, team out. Yeah. Are, they're all, I really do believe their only path is the Chiefs need to beat the Bengals and then the Browns need to beat the Bengals. Yeah. If that happens, and, the, and of course the Steelers have to win both games in Baltimore and against Cleveland. If that, if that does happen, they win the division. There isn't actually any question about it. That's what will happen if, that, if those scenarios play out. Um, you know, if, if everything else falls to them, and they end up in the seventh seed, you know, they end up playing Tennessee probably. Which is a team that you might be able to beat. Yeah, you provided might be able to win. Unless, Derek you know, Henry comes Derek back. Henry's back. <laughs> and, AJ, you know, and, and, and what's his name? A.J. Brown comes, is back uh, and oh. plays well. You know, you got both of those guys back. Uh, it's a different team. There's no question about yeah, it. And I, I, the AJ Brown news came late, and I didn't start him in fantasy, and I'm just sitting there kicking myself in the rear over it. I mean, he tore it up too. So you got a lot of nice. Uh, there's there's just a lot of parody in the NFL period anymore, and I think Chris Collinsworth was speaking of that, or Tony Romo, oh, one of these guys. Seriously, you're not both my favorites. Chris Collinsworth, yeah. Oh, hey, Chris Collinsworth had he had some good uh, he had some good comments yesterday. You can make me throw night, up. So. Come on, uh, and they had to talk about something because that game was just otherwise like the Cowboys. Just it could be much worse. And I still think the guys. I still think and this is the funny thing. You see Taylor Heineke come out. And he has like one decent game last year in a playoff game, and everybody's 
immediately praising him. And he's better than, you know, Mason Rudolph or any of these other guys. Everybody always jumps to the next guy. So I know I'll get my hate mail on it. But there are some – he's not – that's not the guy there, okay? And there's a lot of teams with a lot of bad situations. You talk about Baker. Imagine if the Browns took Sam Darnold. They wouldn't be anywhere near what they are right now, I don't think. And obviously Josh Rosen. Maybe Josh Allen. Maybe a little bit different of a story there. But he's, Oh, that's – Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen legit. Yeah. looks – is legit. He looks – I mean, remember, that I kept saying that season, if you're going to draft a quarterback – if that's the quarterback, then you take Josh Allen. I said I was I was on the Josh Allen trade the whole time, um, yes. and and that was my quarterback from that draft class. Uh, but you know it is what it is. So the, anybody who thought uh, you know anybody who thought the Steelers were going to draft a quarterback in that draft class was wrong then too. So hey, I got one fan mail early, item before I should say since they did draft Mason. But, yeah, yeah, I got one fan mail item before I leave, and of course Josh Allen. I'm saying you know almost like hey, is this guy having a down year? Because it seems like the the Bills are up and down. I mean, he's over four thousand yards, thirty four touchdowns with twelve interceptions. It's pretty much almost the season he had last year. It's yeah. just that as a team, they're not putting together a few of these wins. Right. And getting the same type of record because they went third. Nice, three. nice win against the Patriots, so, though. Yeah, they did. After coming back and just uh, Mac Jones only throwing three passes and they're getting beaten completely to the point where Micah Hyde and uh, Jordan Poyer walked off the stand there in the presser. So <laughs> somebody yeah. asked them the wrong question, PO'd them. And I have a lot more respect to them to walk out than to just start MFing people. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> into the microphone, just, you know, you're really in the heat of the moment. They're still so mad. That makes me think. Here, I'll tell you. They didn't even I mean, shower. I, I mean, they were still uh, uh, there, like with the, what they wear yeah. under their pads. And uh, what do we got? Our one percenters are maybe here right now. Yeah, maybe, exactly. Maybe our half percent. We went longer than I thought we yeah. would. But I, w- I watched a movie last night called "Don't Look Up." Oh yeah, I'm got That's one of the ones you weren't looking I, I forward to our it. show. Maybe that uh, one. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed the film on Netflix. I'll give it. I'll give it a, a two thumbs up with my Siskel and Ebert impersonation. Um, Joe and Brian. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, they talk about um, having social media training or, or something like that. And I'm like, okay, clearly those two guys have gotten some good advice, good social media training, which is don't lose your you know, poop and just walk off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So somebody made a comment about the chip in the ball uh, thing with the goal line technology and this and that. And you know what? I wanted to come back to that too. I thought the officials still stunk, even though it didn't mean a hill of beans to the result of the game. Did you see the play where Patrick Mahomes looks like he's clo- – nobody mentioned this on TV. He may have thrown that ball over the line of scrimmage. There was zero mention of it. And that was one of the longer I passes, saw, I think, on the second or third drive. And they went one and holding and did penalty the whole game? Yeah, that was just I, I mean, bonkers. I don't know what – like, there must just – as I said before, as I said on tweet, I mean, there must be just some curse that says the Steelers aren't allowed to score points in the first half. Uh, but in addition to that, there must have been an edict that said, thou shalt not call any penalties in this first half of this game. Uh, because, I mean, I'm watching and I'm going, okay, there's holding, there's holding, there's this, there's that. Uh, false start. Yeah, false start. I mean, and, and I'm going to be honest. I'm talking about both sides of the ball. Yeah. Steelers tackles jumped several times that didn't get called. <laughs> Chooks. Yeah. I watched Chooks do it probably twice. And no, that's completely fair. It was just, I just yeah. found it odd that, you know, under the microscope of everything, that nobody thought to bring that up. And they went and hurried up to the line, scooted down the field 35 yards. That was the Gore completion, I think. And um, at and that then point, ran I, a was, play and I was killing was zombies on my phone. It. Yeah, I know. It's like I mean, I was, there were plenty I was of watching. other distractions, Christmas lights, tinsel. I find, I find, hey, it's still here. I'm still airing the grievances. I find tinsel distracting. <laughs> I understand. I, I mean, I was the game was on until you know CBS turned it off and then turned it back on because there literally was nothing else to play. Um, but you know, I did, I did watch, but I was, I was playing my Walking Dead game on my phone, so. <laughs> and and you know what? I cannot blame you. I think I was petting a Pomeranian at that time. But back to the chip in the ball. Wait a minute. You had a rat dog in your lap? Two rat dogs, actually, uh, over, over the wife's house. So the sister-in-law has a chihuahua. This is this is the dog I despise <laughs> and more then than the any other breed of dog. 
<laughs> and Pomeranian is number two. Okay. So these little two little yappy dogs you have around, that would have been hell on earth. It was like me. celebrity death match. Yeah, that's, you know, that's was... the worst thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> and the one's like a and the one and the Pomeranian's a puppy. So Well, yeah, that it's... that at least gives it a level of cuteness yes. that you sort of can like, okay, I can tolerate this because you're a puppy. You're going to grow into a rat that I will hate. But you're a puppy now, so I I'll still go, you're a little rat, but you're a baby rat. And they, even a baby rat is sort of cute. <laughs> the, the, the puppy, and we're way off the rails. We're at like 0.5% now of people yeah. left, but the, the, the thing's on crack. And so I'm sitting there trying to keep it calm. <laughs> like, you know, it's going right. nuts a, a, as I should be going nuts looking at the game, but I'm just, I'm so numb to it. You would have thought I took like a, a, a Prozac or a Xanax or whatever. Like maybe we, we, we might need some depression meds before the season's over with. Hey, hey. What, All right. Here again. Did you get anything? Of, I, I haven't checked in with you on this. Have we gotten a second nomination for Helmetworth? No, we need some more. I, I, we have right. more than more than just at, one, at, but at this, it seems like only, it's just I one. I feel like we only have one. We, maybe do we, we have do. more than one? I don't know. All Let's right. send it if to the have, guy. If we have more than one, and, and whoever was the one, I'm just going to tell you, you got one more week. Everybody else that hasn't done it, if you want this helmet right here in your home, you know, and you can just go, Hey, I got a piece of Steelers memorabilia. It's uh, you know, you can wear it. I don't care what you do with it. If you want this thing, just tell me why. Otherwise the guy, the only guy who bothered to submit an entry will get it. Yeah. And this we have it. This is the last week by the and time I, of the Browns game. If uh, when the Browns game is over and we do the post game for the Browns game, so either that guy's getting it or somebody else. So if you, if you have any interest in this helmet, Give us the helmet. So that, that says Quadzilla. We know who Quadzilla is. Jeff Reed. This is a yes. Jeff Reed autograph that says two-time Super Bowl champs, 215 field goals made, 959 career points, Quadzilla. So it's got four inscriptions and his signal. I, I might send something that way. <laughs> Although I could just, I, you know, Jeff's such a cool have, guy. There you go. You have Chloe do it. I could just, yeah, I could just, you know, my daughter, uh, for reference. So, um, it, yeah, it just reminds me of another thing that sidetracks me from talking about the comment with the chip in the ball, but it's similar. There was somebody talking about like competitive advantage and the Baltimore Ravens have these scoreboards that are, you know, yay, eye level as you're kicking field goals. And uh, of course the Steelers do this now too. And I think they stole this from the Ravens is Justin Tucker kicks into like a Ravens logo or a completely black screen. The visitor is kicking into now it's like TV static. It's like the test pattern and it's moving around and everything. And somebody brought this up in one of these Facebook groups. I think it's the one where everybody swears and curses and talks trash that I don't get involved with too much. And somebody called me a liar because I said, well, Jeff Reed said that they used to zoom in on his face and and then have his face and it would go in, out, in, out on his, like on his face as he's uh, lining up to take this kick. And somebody's like, don't make anything up like that. They don't do the TV static or the, the zoom. In. And I'm like, he told me personally. <laughs> like, it's on uh, one of these old podcasts that we have where we interviewed him. So that's, you know, yeah, Jeff's making this up, right? And uh, I personally, I saw that in, like, the game a week or two ago, whenever they played at home last, that they had the TV static. Well, the Steelers, they don't have anything in the one end zone. The other end zone, they just leave. They're not as obnoxious with it. It's just the field. It's just a live video. There's nothing like scrolling through or some crazy test pattern or anything like that when it's a visitor. But Boswell just kicks it a logo. And they've even done yeah. three logos, which, you know, I maybe it's their preference. He goes and tells the people that, that, that run these things or tells somebody and they tell a friend, they tell a friend, and they tell the operator, hey, Chris likes to have three logos up there so he could aim at the one on the left when he's going from the right hash or something like that. You know what I mean? And – Hey, that's home field advantage. You know what I mean? I don't have necessarily a problem with it. I'm just saying this is what these teams do. If you don't think some of these teams hose down and run the sprinklers to try and mess with some of the, you know, faster, like a Chiefs offense or something like that, you're out of your mind to not think that the Steelers haven't done that with the Ravens in the past. So chipping the ball. Oh, somebody will just lock into, you know, the Wi Fi signal or whatever on that. Well, it hasn't happened in other sports. And, and, they already have secure communications, encrypted communications with New York and the headsets that the referees are wearing there on the field. So I wanted to point that out. Hopefully this 
go it, probably if they're commenting they're probably someone that's still listening anyway so i know yeah. we, i know we laugh about some of this somebody has it in there sometimes we have some good vital information you got to stay to the end so i had saying on the on the helmet worthy thing i haven't put this out on social media you got all these contest trolls that are on twitter no screw them this is for you guys this is for all of you that sit here and watch and, and put up with us week to week and for the entirety of the show especially when we have absolutely zero to say about it. we didn't even say the score 36 to 10 loss. I mean, we don't want to even acknowledge this game, but we don't feel that we need to go hiding into a cave when the Steelers lose and only come out when they win, like some of the <clears throat> other people do. So, or just complain about the team in general. But hey, this is for all of you. Yeah. So, or use. Yeah, absolutely. That's what the mother in law use, says. Use, 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 use instead of yens. My mom use, says yens. Use, use, she guys. says use. So, yeah, go use. Go and uh, do something. You could do it through the website. You could do it through. Uh, it should look the Facebook Messenger. The get and bombarded with so many things on Facebook. It's worth looking at. Twitter. Put it up on Twitter. You could privately put it up on YouTube and shoot us a link or something, or your Google Photos or whatever it is that you need. Send us the video. And the, the criteria, Brian, is what? Just to say why you're helmet worthy. And if you go that's an it. hour, if you go an hour, we're gonna have to listen to you for an hour, like you listen to us. So it's only fair. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. So you may um, even end up on got... the show. <laughs> we'll Look, just put your yeah, video. Yeah, up. we'll just put you up and say, "Hey, this is uh, welcome to the show." Um, <laughs> Look, Peter in Australia. So <laughs> yeah, look, look, Peter in Australia knows knows how to win. Just you know, make Adeline do real the video. person. Real person, by the way. We're real not person. making this up. Good. Dude. And his when we were doing the the helmet worthy with mini helmets, she got a Cam Hayward mini helmet. Yeah, and and gave us one of the best reactions ever uh, from from her video. So it's great. Um, yeah, Peter, you probably actually. Well, what do I? You know, if you if you if you deserve to win, you'll win, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we're gonna put a bow on this, my friend. Uh, thanks for joining me. I know it's uh, you got the week off. You're laid up. You would have had the week off regardless. Well, maybe not. Yeah, we're all in work from home type situations here sometimes with the real with the real life gigs and what pays some of the bills, right? Uh, so, but still, it's a ho holiday season, so I appreciate you taking out your time to join uh, me and put this out for all the people who are actually going to pay attention this week. They're still belching and uh, eating leftovers and all that fun stuff as as I think we might be too. So, yeah. What was that you grilled up? If anybody's those... curious, if anybody's curious why I have this jacket on, it's new. In my house? No, it's not new. I've had oh. this. It's actually too big for me at this point. It's huge. Uh, but I wear it, and I'm wearing it because my furnace went out as well. So I've got no furnace. I have no heat in the house, right? The furnace is dead. I've, I've got it scheduled to be replaced uh, on the 30th, but I got to get a negative COVID test before then, or I can't get them to come in and replace it. And I'll have to delay it. So, you know, hey, my... My holiday season is encapsulating the Steelers' overall season. It's a, a you know, I'm not going to throw the S-bomb out here, but it's that kind of a show. <laughs> <laughs> man. Hey, I feel for you, man. I'm sure everyone else is, too. It's um, that's that, that sucks, man. I, I feel bad for you. And yeah, I didn't know about the first. I knew about all the other stuff we talked, but the the furnace thing, geez, man. It's just coming at you from every direction. So hopefully. It's all good. Well, well at least just get your brain off of that for a little bit. We can keep going if it helps. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I eventually I, I, should do something the, else with my life. But the, the last <laughs> few people who are still on board watching are going, no, please just no, end it please, now. Thank no, you. No, please, yeah, can you okay. just end it? <laughs> no, and this is not only me saying peace with two fingers up and to wrap this, but this is how many people are still left listening. <laughs> it's just us. So <laughs> it's it just went now. Just, yeah, me and you, that's it. And, that's you, and Brian just dropped here. I'm, I'm out. out. So, all right, folks, don't forget to like, that's very important. Like the show, <laughs> comment, subscribe. I have some more things coming here. I, I was thinking of some new ideas for the show in the new year. We'll get to those on another time. I'm not going to keep you any longer. If you're still here, we do appreciate you. Thank you for supporting SCU. My name is Joe. His name is Brian. Until next time, we encourage everyone out there to stay warm, be safe, be good, and we'll catch you, we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 